Hey, welcome to my channel. In this video, I wanted to talk about the Pocket Station. I got one of these last year while I was in Japan because they only released there. And then I finally got around to figuring out how to put software on it, even though there's not many games in North America that are actually compatible with it. There are a few though. But even so, I think it's easier to just install software on this guy manually using PS1 or PS2 homebrew software. So the key for me to getting software on this little guy was using FreeMic Boot or FreeHD Boot as well as Launch Elf so I could transfer data onto this. And getting this homebrew software on your PS1 or PS2 could be a whole other video. I'm not going to go over that in this video. I'm just going to talk about how I got my software onto this guy. Another option is getting the PS3 USB to memory card adapter, but those are kind of rare and expensive these days. I feel like getting a PS2 and installing the homebrew software or getting one that's already modded would be the cheaper option. Option. But anyways, some background on this guy. Basically, it's a PlayStation 1 memory card with a screen, similar to the Dreamcast visual memory unit, but it also reminds me of a Tamagotchi. And as I said, there are a few North American games that still have the code in them to officially support it, but the one game that I had was Final Fantasy VIII, but then it turns out you have to get pretty far into the game before your save file will actually work with the Pocket Station. So I decided to go the homebrew route. So basically, I needed some PS1 save files that will work with the Pocket Station, and then Googling around, I managed to find an internet archive that has almost all of the official save files of Japanese games that will work on the Pocket Station. And then I found a few other pieces of software from Orionsoft and almost all of these files were in the GME format. So GME is a fairly old format for memory card dumps from PS1 memory cards. And then I used this piece of software called Memcard Rex to process these save files and I needed to convert them into a raw format that I would be able to copy directly onto the Pocket Station. Another handy tool for converting some of these save file formats was saveeditor.com. So between that and memcardrex you should be able to convert just about any PS1 save file to and from any type of console or emulator or whatever PlayStation 1 program you want. So basically using Launch Elf, I can put these raw files onto a FAT32 USB and then just copy them directly onto the Pocket Station, which appears as a memory card in this interface. There's one game I wanted to try, Fun Fun Pingu, and I couldn't actually find a save file online for this game. So instead, I emulated the game in DuckStation and then used the save file from DuckStation, which was an MCD format, and then MemCardRex was also able to convert that into a raw file. Some of the software from Orionsoft are in bin format, and unfortunately, I wasn't able to get those working on the Pocket Station. I think you need PS1 homebrew software, but I don't have any PS1 homebrew software set up right now. So from this internet archive and Orionsoft's homebrew software, I picked a few that I wanted to try out. So I tried this game called Hitman. I tried installing Metal Gear Solid Integral. Of course, I tried Pingu. Final Fantasy VIII because that's a really popular one to try out in North America. I also tried this Tetris. Ridge Racer 4 is another one that's popular in the West for Pocket Station. And then I tried some of Orion Soft's custom software. But yeah, basically once you get Memcard Rex working and you figure out how to import individual saves and memory card dumps and convert those into raw saves, it's pretty straightforward. And then you just need to take those raw saves, put them on to a FAT32 USB and then you can just go into Launch Elf and copy those over. Surprisingly, a lot of these files were actually really large and I was only able to fit like three or four max. It has the same amount of blocks as a memory card, but in a lot of cases, you have to import the PS1 save as well as the Pocket Station software. So it ends up taking a lot more space than I think it normally would. But most of the software actually did work. I had some issues. I think in most cases, you will have to manually transfer the actual PS1 save file onto the memory card using some sort of fancier emulator than just copying the raw files because I couldn't get a lot of the games to work. They would load up the mini game on the pocket station, but then it would just say no save file or no copy or something along that nature. Some of them that are more just interactive apps worked out of the box, but yeah, a lot of these games were the actual save file on the Pocket Station can be transferred back and affect your game on the PlayStation 1 console. It didn't seem to work when I just used save files from the internet. And some of my favorites that I tried out was of course Pingu. There's one application in it that's just a soundboard. You can make Pingu make different sounds. Tetris was also really crazy. It's single pixel for each block. So it's really hard to line up your pieces, but that's pretty cool that it's a full functioning Tetris game on this little thing. Apparently it has the same processor as the Game Boy Advance, but way less RAM. And then of course the screen is way smaller, but that just gives you an example of how powerful this thing can be. And then also Orionsoft's Nyan Cat was really cool. And I'll just play that for you here. <laughs> 
But yeah, I tried out a bunch of other things. Some of them didn't work. A lot of them are just kind of passive Tamagotchi looking characters on your screen. Like it's pretty straightforward, but it is still kind of a slow process to try out these games. But yeah, hopefully this gives you an idea of what you can do with this thing in 2024. And I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. If you made it this far, like and subscribe. And let me know down below what other kind of retro PlayStation content you'd like to see. And I'll see you next time.